Hey gang, I am reporting in from Arizona and I wanted to update you on some news that came in oh, about two weeks ago. I did an episode about two and a half years ago in July of 2021 on a woman who was murdered in Wisconsin, Diane Oakwitz, was in Menominee Falls in the Milwaukee, North Milwaukee area and there has been news that has come in a press conference there that they've identified the killer using DNA genealogy. Now, if you remember when we did the episode two and a half years ago, I was harping on that, like, come on, there has to be some type of fluid evidence, either blood or otherwise, on or near Diane's body. Why are we not jumping on top of that? It's been five years, more than five years since the San Francisco case where they really started doing this genealogy stuff where they they caught that guy with those methods and everybody's been doing it. So I'm happy to report though that they have identified the killer and his name is or was Clarence Mark Tappendorf. Now he was a delivery driver in 1966 for the Claremont Transfer Company whose route included that of Diane's employer where she was that night. Now, the night she was murdered, he was connected as being making a delivery, but not to uh, where Diane was at, but to the company across the street. So he was on the list. He was, I believe, investigated, but of course they didn't have any uh, enough evidence to charge him. So here we go. We are linking the murder they have of Diane to another murder that he committed two miles away from there later in 1971. What a, so that would have been about five years later, a 15-year-old girl named Terry Lee Erdman. And she was stabbed. Now, Diane was stabbed over 100 times. I think Terry Lee was stabbed like 60 times. So it was similar type, they kind of tied together the two cases, but the DNA proved that Clarence had killed both. Clarence Mark Tappendorf. And what's interesting, Deb, our ancestry helper, went back and she told me that Tappendorf's daughter was murdered back then when she was a teenager. So you have to start wondering if there's any connections with that. There's been some dubious family history I think with the brother, his brother, so there was there was some nefarious stuff going on back then. There's some records. But what's I find interesting is if you look at his obituary, you know, it's a typical stuff. Uh, he's you can look online now that he was a loving husband of 57 years and you know, the loving father and all the descendants and blah blah blah. And you have to feel bad for these these people because they had, they're probably shell-shocked. Two weeks ago they were shell-shocked with this news. Can you imagine? Of course the family has no comment, had no idea. And that's what happens. These killers, all these killers we're catching today with this new genealogy approach, family tree, turn out to be men with no records and loving husbands and fathers, and they're going down like flies. Many of them have passed on already, have faced the ultimate judgment. But many are white-haired men you see are being led away in handcuffs. So kudos to the Menominee Falls Police Department for finally solving this. I have to say, though, that I, I you know, we, I think we, we made a lot of people aware. I, I think 167,000 views as of today. There were a lot of people chiming in from Wisconsin and that area when I published this. Didn't seem like anything was going on. Maybe there was, but it, it just seems kind of coincidental that two years or so ago I, I, we do this episode and it takes about that long to go through this whole type of process and nail and get the guy exhumed and confirm and then get to the press conference. So maybe it's coincidence, maybe it's not, but all I can say is we really got the word out on this case and I'm happy that 
the Menominee Falls Police Department got it solved. They didn't, when I published it, I had said that I would offer $10,000 towards genealogy and pay for it and no response when I called, no response when the episode came out. And if they were really working on it two and a half years ago when I did this, I think like if they were halfway through it and really on it, they would have had a press conference like a year ago. But again, maybe it's coincidence, maybe it's not. The important thing is the case is solved. And as of yet, I've not been able to get a picture of this creep, this monster, Clarence Tappendorf. I'm sure one will leak out soon, and when it does, I'll post it. So rest in peace, Diane. And that's it for now.